Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. We have a wonderful, good group here. Um, and this session is entitled Building Successful Partnerships with Communities of Color. My name is Merwin Scott. And before I get started, we will um, sort of go through introductions. Um, we'll have background on communities of color. We'll speak about the power of communities of color. We'll speak about, we'll have an at interactive activity. Uh, we'll speak about the Minority Community Organizing and Partnerships Department, the department that I work in and how it's a new department and how we're looking at doing things a little bit differently at NEA with regards to our partnerships, especially how we partner with communities of color. Um, the tools that are available with, within our entire center, the Center for Advocacy, and I'll explain that as well. We'll speak about the recent MCOP grant and how we're helping give tools and um, uh, how we're helping uh, locals and state affiliates build um, partnerships with communities of color as well. And uh, we are uh, speaking about the partnership survey. Again, my name is Merwin Scott. Some um, folks in the room who I know very, very well, some people I work with um, uh, recently uh, on um, voting rights um, uh, legislation and, vote and engaging a community. Uh, I used to be in the government relations department as a lobbyist at NEA, and it would be this March, 10 years since I was in NEA. Last year, November, I took a new position as a director of Minority Community Organizing and Partnerships Department. In that department, the way we're housed, the way we're set up, we took, um, it was two departments, and we, we, we combined them into one department. So we had the Minority Community Outreach Department that did outreach to all the communities of color. And we also had the partnership department who did re outreach to all of our partners and advocated around, with, with helped us, who helped us advocate on our priorities. And um, we collapsed both of those departments in what we do. We have outreach. We have an African American desk. We have a Hispanic Latino desk. We have an API desk as well. And we have a Native American desk. Uh, and then we also have a desk that only deals with our partnerships and how we collaborate and communicate with our partners. And we also have a desk and we do our community outreach with regard to our community conversations desk as well. And that's sort of how we're set up within um, minority community organizing and partnerships. And um, before I go on, I would love for you all to introduce yourselves. But when you introduce yourself, what I want you, it'll get us thinking because we're going to have a project. I am not going to be speaking the entire two hours. Um, we're going to have a project that I'm going to give you. But I want you to start thinking about, um, and the reason why we do this exercise, because not only within the positions you hold within the association, you have power within your relationships and the things that you do in your civic engagement and associations, the things you do in your churches, the thing you do in your children's activities. Uh, we have power and we, and, and so what I want you to do, and I'll start it off. And when you introduce your name, your position that you hold and your local that you work with, and within a one month period, the people who you talk to outside of the association, when I say the people who you speak to, um, you may be a choir member, you may be on the deacon board, you may be um, the, 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 the outreach director for the PTA, you may be the little league basketball girls coach. Who do you talk to with, with outside of the association? The reason why we're doing this, as educators, we do a really good job especially at the NEA, we talk to ourselves a lot, yeah, right? I have a great conversation with this brother right here. He came down, he did the NAACP partnership too. We can speak about that all day long. But if I'm only talking to him and he's only talking to me and we're not speaking to anyone out in the community and what's going on, it's not gonna help us. Because we're gonna agree for the most part with regard to public education. And so how do we have these, who are we speaking to, not around public education, but who do we have relationships with? So. My name is Merwin Scott. I'm the director of Minority Community Organizing and Partnerships. Um, let's see, who do I speak to outside of the National Education As uh, Association? I'm the legislative chair uh, for the PTA in my community. I am the legislative liaison with my fraternity, Capital Alpha Psi. Uh, I sit on the board in Maryland for the 100 black men. Uh, I'm a member, uh, active member of the NAACP. I coach my little uh, my son's um, football team, the Laurel Steelers football team. Uh, let's see, I also am the liaison between my wife and the grocery store that she wants to go to. So I take her 
um, information and I um, also go to Safeway and Giants. So I speak with them a lot on the things that my wife. So who do you speak to? And we'll start to, with this gentleman right here. And we'll go around the table. Okay, my name um, is John and Bullock. I'm from Henderson, North Carolina. I'm running for the next EAP of the year and the state EAP of the year of North Carolina. I'm here to throw them at Little Yang Elementary School. And who do I talk to? I've got to listen. I'm a second bus driver. I, I'm a uh, help out with the boy and girl path and the boy and girl path. Wow. My name is Jameel Williams, and I am the local unit president in Vance County for Henderson, North Carolina. I am also an NCAE board member, um, state board. I'm on the NEA board of directors, director at large. I'm also a member of a social club called the Bad Boys and Lady Bad Boys Social Club, which I serve as president. I'm a member of NAACP in my local Vance County also is the local president of, well, we're going to call it the Elks Lodge. I am the Zalta ruler. I also am a teacher assistant slash bus driver. And I am a choir member um, serving as treasurer. I'm also a trustee on the trustee board at, at my church. Um, and I also um, serve on several boards, <laughs> which is too numerous to um, to announce, I'm a father, grandfather um, of three kids, two granddaughters that I love with all of my heart, and I am a mama's boy. I love my mother with all of my heart. Uh, mm. With that, saying all of that, thank you. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, my name is Evelyn Thomas. I am from a little town in Arkansas called Strong's, S-T-R-O-N-D-G. Um, I am president of my local association, which is Strong Hutty Education Association. Um, people that I talk to, uh, besides my church family, uh, would be uh, the Parents Center, uh, the PTO, school board, and uh, I'm also the ESP of the year, so I talk to talk in my uh, state association also. I uh, am a member of Opportunity to Learn, and it's a branch of Citizen First. Uh, I'm the in-school suspension slash remediator at my school. I also talk to my students and uh, my members. Uh, and just last week, I talked to the, we had a, a forum, and that consisted of the parents, PTO getting together, uh, my local association group, uh, the acronym is SHIA, and uh, we put a program on, and it was called SOS, Save Our School, and we uh, talked to the public we invited the public out, we served them refreshments, and we talked to them about uh, the, the testing that's coming up and encouraging them to uh, be supportive of the school, encourage the students to take charge mm -hmm. because testing is important to our school. Absolutely. And uh, <coughs> I also speak to my children yes. that I have an in-school suspension. I try, not, I try to encourage them that that's not the place to be and also help them with their work. Okay. All right, good morning. Good morning. My name is Sherry White. Um, I'm the president of my local association, which is Meriwether County, and about 80 miles south of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, ooh -wee. I am also on the trustee board at my church. This is my second year holding that office. Um, I'm a cheerleader coach at the um, middle school where I work. I co-teach language arts slash science. Also, I am assistant band auxiliary sponsor at the high school level. Then, what else I do? I am a part of the Eastern Star um, Lodge number 617 out of my Zion Hill community where I do, um, I'm very, very busy with them. Okay. Um, I do, I talk a lot to my parents 
um, as far as with my both of my school organizations, um, with my cheerleader parents and also my band student parents. I'm very active uh, with those parents. Also, um, in my community, which is outside of my community, I visited a lot of churches where my students attend. Okay. okay. So that puts me in good standing um, with them. Great. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Peggy Smith Mitchell, and I am the president of my uh, local association in uh, Henry County, okay. Georgia. Yes. Um, I am also on the uh, state leadership, not leadership, but the uh, membership committee. Uh, I am a youth advisor in my church and I also um, is one of the uh, leaders in our nursery. Uh, I am a parent. I have two sons so you know there are a lot of their friends come around so I talk with them. My name is Viola Career and um, I am from Brownsville, Texas and I am the ch uh, legislative chair for um, the Association of Brownsville. 4,000 members strong. Um, I am an, um, to extend my my work with um, wi within AOBE. I also am uh, working with um, AOBE grievance committee, which is uh, which allows us to move up in how to help our administrator to uh, deal with the grievances and. Uh, to reach out to the community, I am an OFA member with the Obama campaign. Um, I am a Valley Interfaith member. Um, I'm also a uh, precinct chair for my community. I am the vice president of the Southwest Texas Democratic Women's Club. And um, I am a Catholic daughter of America member with uh, St. Mary's Catholic Church. I am with the Altar Rosary Committee with our church, and I'm also an usher with our church. I had four children, three girls, one boy. My second oldest, Viola, is a president in Michigan, Midland, Michigan. She's been there for almost five terms. And um, I have nine grandchildren, one great-grandchild <coughs> on the way. I am the dean's secretary for the school where I work, which is Hannah High School, about 350 employees, 3,000 students, okay? And um, keeps us very busy. Uh, we are, uh, we have about 35 schools and um, a lot of work. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is Kimberly Black. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. I am currently um, just been elected this year the treasurer of our local, which is Las Leon County Schools employees. And also they just put me as election chair for that same organization. Um, I talk to everybody about the union since I've been, I was a member for years and never became active. So the last three, four years I've been really active. So I talk to parents, teachers, I talk to, um, I actually I've recruited some teachers. I've talked to um, my family, I've talked to my church members, I've talked to my pastor, um, I've talked to even a couple of people outside of my local that's in other locals about the union. Um, I am the register slash jack of all trades of my school. I've been there 16 years. I've seen them all come and go, so I'm like the go-to person at my school. Um, I serve on numerous of boards that I don't want to mention. I serve on a lot of boards. I am the mother of nine. Um, four of them I had biologically. Um, the other five come from marriage. I have six grandchildren. Um, two of my own. The other come from my other children. I am now the foster mom of two. Um, I am a... Um, I'm just here to learn, um, to see what's going on. I have aspirations of doing something bigger with the union. So and this is my first conference, so I come to see what it's all about. But seven people here in this room, proud, strong ESP members, right? We have three million members in our association. But let's just go through and see if I can read my writing too. Anybody, any, um, 
um, three million members of our association, but who do we talk to outside of the association because they're power in numbers. And as we communicate and engage com the community, we don't even know we're already doing it through OFA, through on the church board, bad, was it bad boys, the men club. <laughs> I want to be a member of that. But yeah, okay, some, uh, we have an uh, individual here who's a bus driver, uh, board members of the state affiliation, NEA board member, the bad boys, um, Social Club, I want to get more information on that. The NAACP, the Elks Lodge, bus driver, choir member, trustee board, father, many parents, fathers, grandparents, um, uh, fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers in here, uh, PTO, the uh, Parent Center, uh, ESP of the Year, um, the Remediator, the SHEA uh, organization, SHEA. Uh, save our school and was able to speak to the community around testing. Um, trustee at church, the cheerleader, the cheerleader coach, band sponsor, member of the Eastern Star, very powerful. Parents organization, speak to parents all the time. Church outreach, being outreach in the faith community. Uh, state membership, uh, the youth advisory with, re with regard to the nursery, speaking to parents as well, the Henry County Counseling Board, uh, speak to the past all the time, that's always a, a, a good thing. OFA member in Texas, the Valley Interfaith, um, the precinct chair, the uh, vice president of the Southwest Te Texas Democratic Women's Association, uh, Catholic Daughters of America, usher in your church, uh, parent, and her daughter is the president in, in Michigan. So not only when we speak about union roles, but establishing union roles with regard within our family and teaching that within our family how important it is to be a member of an association and be act, an active member as well uh, and have uh, grandchildren as well. Um, uh, somebody said they speak to everyone. That's the, you know, we have to speak to everyone about what we're doing and how we are the backbone of public education. Uh, talk to other locals with regard to, you know, the importance of unionism as well. The register at the school, so you know you see everybody coming and going. You know everyone, and a um, on many served on many different boards, and also a proud mother and uh, and grandmother. So with that, all the power that's just in this room and seven people. Just imagine with three million members engaging the community, letting the community know what we're doing to support public education and how we're giving it our all. But at the same time, we have families as well, but we make a sacrifice to, to, to protect the integrity of public education. And we're going to speak about why, because there are other folks in, in our same communities that are engaging in our communities as well. So when we look at a snapshot of America to sort of get us sort of focused, and those you may want to get comfortable and turn around, but you look at the ethnic minority communities that comprise 36% of the United States population. Uh, they account for 85 percent of the population growth in the United States of America. But let's look at the, we know the political power. We understand the political power. We'll go through that with regard to the rise um, with the, in the political power in the African American community, the Hispanic Latino communities, the API communities as well. But a huge consumer base. When I speak about con consumer base, somebody help me out. What, what, what does that mean? The consumer base with regard to uh, communities of color, how much money we spend, how we're leveraging our dollars and what we spend our money on. Somebody give me a guess with regard to in one year, how much money does the African American, what's our consumer base, how much money do we spend as, a, as, as an ethnicity, as a group of people? Uh-uh. Come on, give me, come on, give me, give me, give me, give me millions. millions, billions, billions, billions trillions. trillions. 1.3 trillion dollars. We make up the money we spend, 1.3 trillion dollars. The Latino Hispanic community. Give me a guess. Help me out here. 1.2 trillion dollars. Up from five years ago, 850 million dollars. The API community. $670 billion. There's power in what? Numbers. Their power is power in money and power in numbers. It's a huge amount of money. Um, so when we speak about that the ethnic minority communities are a major political and consumer base. Uh, the snapshot of America. 
50 percent uh, makes up African American um, communities of color uh, with the, 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 the major four different groups. 50 percent of the children are born here in the United States. Um, some people, this is information from the census, 2010 census, but some people disagree with these figures with regard to um, communities of color will become the majority in the next 40 years. Some people say that's already happening right now, but we'll wait for the new census numbers to come out. The Hispanic and Latino communities, right now, 16.3% uh, of the populations in the United States, 37.6 in Texas. Um, African American population, black population, 13.6 in the United States as well. Um, 37.18% in Mississippi alone. Uh, if you look at the Asian and other communities, 5.6% in the United States, but 13% in California. It's a huge population span. But let's look individually uh, at the, uh, AP, the, the American Indian community and the Alaska Native community. American Indians maintain a unique status with regard to their sovereignty um, within with the, 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 a deal that was cut with the United States of America. It consists of 565 federally recognized tribes, highly concentrated in uh, South Dakota, Alaska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Montana, North Dakota, and Arizona. But there's something that I want you all to focus on as we go into why we need to engage the community of color, when we look at the Native American number with regard to the graduation rate, the Hispanic graduation rate, and the African American graduation rate, I want you to pay attention when we look at 51% of high school graduation rate in the United States. The API community, fastest growing racial population in the United States. Everyone thinks it's the Hispanic community. It is the a API community, the fastest. 70% uh, um, speak a language other than English at home. Um, as we said earlier, they make up 5.6% of the total United States population. Um, Monica Tamrith, who does the API community, she really likes to highlight this point because when you look at the aggregated academic data, it perpetuates the, the, the model of minority myth. And she really wants to sort of highlight that because a lot of the, the myth in the, in the community, oh, in the API community, the kids are really doing much better than the other communities of color, and that's really not the case at all. But I want us to pay attention to graduation rate. Black community, 12.8% of total U.S. population. <clears throat> Two million black children speak another language other than English. We don't even focus on that. Two, two million black children speak another language. Highly concentrated in New York City, Chicago, Houston, and Detroit, of those urban areas. 54% um, high school graduation rate. 54%. 51% for um, um, the, the Native American community and 54% for the black community. The Latino community, 16.3% of the total population, will triple its population by the year 2050. Triple. So that's why we have to engage the community because the numbers are swelling, the numbers are growing. We can't sit and say, oh, well, you know, let's not engage the communities of color. We have to because these children are coming to our schools, our public schools, and we have to have a relationship with the community to better serve. 56% um, 50, of the high school graduation rate. For 51, Native American, 54, African Black, 56, Latino community. Community colors with regard to education, I mean, with regard to impacting the 2012 elections. We have to touch on this. This is a slide I said, oh, the election's over, let's pull this out. And my team said, no, we need to keep this PowerPoint in because it still shows the power with regard, the political power with regard to in, in communities of color. If you look at Florida, Florida was a what type of state? It was, it was a swing state. Everybody was going to Florida, Ohio. It will be coming to Texas soon because Texas will be there, right? Um, but Latinos made up 18.6% of the popular vote, of all voters. 18.6% of all voters. Ohio, Nevada, those were states that were really important. If you look at the African American population and the API population in Nevada, um, if you look at 73% of Asians backed Obama, they were very proud of that. Um, the Native American, the higher voter highest voter registration rates compared to any other racial ethnic minority group in, those, in, in New Mexico and in Montana. Um, if you look at 93% of African Americans voted for President Obama, 
over 12.2 Latinos cast ballots this election. Historic, historic numbers. So, but let's move on to when we speak about the uh, issues impacting our local community. So we spoke about consumer base, we spoke about um, with regard to elections, we spoke about, even when we spoke about education with regard to the graduation rate, but let's look at some of the, 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 the issues that affect our communities, communities of color. The housing market is underwater. How many, what's the percentage you think that the housing, that, that individuals in this country um, who have mortgages that are underwater right now? What yeah, what's the percentage you think? Yeah. Texas has been bad, Florida's been bad, Georgia's been bad, Maryland's been bad. What's the percentage you think? How, individuals who have mortgages in this country, those mortgages are underwater. Oh, it ain't that bad. Ooh, Lord, we being real. 27.5%. Yeah. Yeah. 27.5%. 27.5%. 27.5%. That's huge when we speak about funding for public education and how the tax base um, funds public education. It's huge. Um, unemployment wage stagnation. Right now, unemployment is hoovering around anywhere from 7.8% to 7.9%. Used to be at 9% during the, right before the election. Now it's, it's, it's sort of between 7.8 and 7.9%. State and federal budget cuts. That means the community is going into debt. Child poverty. How many children do you think are living in poverty right now in the United States of America? 24, 24%. Too many. 24% of children in this country are living in poverty, below the poverty level. Then we speak about public education versus private, and private um, profiteers. Those who are on Wall Street, those individuals who want to, in their minds, invest in public education, but at the same time, we look at it as an as opportunity for them to extract from public education when they want to come and say, ooh, vouchers are great for Georgia. Ooh, um, charter schools are great for Georgia. Vouchers for ch children with disability are great for Georgia. We want to bring charters, unleash the charter cap in Texas. All the various different proposals that they're pushing in order for that they can make a profit. Increasing population and diversity. We have to understand that we just saw the numbers that our schools are becoming much more diverse and we have, especially public schools are becoming much more diverse and we have to be prepared for that influx. Mixed immigration status families and the rising costs as states grapple, grapple with the Affordable Care Act right now. There's some, I don't want to get into party, politics in this room, however, uh, there are certain states that don't want to back uh, the Affordable Care Act because Obama pushed it through. Edu absolutely, just like North Carolina. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, educational issues that are impacting the communities of color there still remains a huge persistent opportunity gap with regard to, with, with regard to um, public education right now, with regard to achievement gaps. Um, we just spoke about the graduation rates. Um, we just spoke about that as well. The funding systems don't quite ensure equity. When we speak about equitable funding. We can look at communities in urban areas as, re with regard to, as compared to communities in suburban areas, and the funding is just totally um, um, not fair at all. We speak about teacher assignment and policies. Those policies don't ensure that the students that are in most need receive, in those communities, receive the best teachers. Um, other resources like technologies and rich course offers, offerings are just in, um, are non-existent. Um, and the administration of school discipline with regard to IDEA. And we speak about, we don't want to, especially children of color, we do not want to expel those children because we add to the school to prison pipeline. If we continue to put kids out of school uh, because of discipline matters, then we add to um, the school to prison pipeline. And we need to figure out other alternatives on how we educate those children. And I can give my own personal story. I was one of those kids. Absolutely. I was one of those kids. Oh, he's not paying attention. Put him out. Send him to the alternative school. Right. I just was lucky to have a father who didn't play and educators who knew my parents said, you know, we know we see something in you. You need to stop hanging around these particular group of people thinking that you're cool and that is not who you should be around. But then who's going to, the, the kids that they told me not to hang around who did not have, 
that institutional wraparound services, a parent that was, you know, or other educators who, and, and other, the, other individuals in the community just say, you know what, that kid's not gonna be anything. Counselor told me not to apply to college. End up going to college, getting a full scholarship to law school, and ended up working on Capitol Hill for, as a chief of staff to a member of Congress. And luckily, lost my election to Congress when I ran home to, and to Augusta to run for Congress. Luckily won, because I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be in Washington, D.C. fighting with the Tea Party and, and some of the others right now. But luckily, I'm here with you all today. That is why we have to be involved. That is why we have to engage the community, because our frenemies, our enemies, are going into the communities. Um, so when we look at why we, what, what we must organize with our partners to do what? Fight income inequality and create more good jobs, lift children and families out of poverty, provide the equity of educational opportunities. There should not be a disparity, disparity with regard to educational opportunities at all. Provide enhanced educational equality by supporting educators and their desire to improve their practice. We have to lead the profession. Those people that I showed you on the, on the screen before, from the corporate entities who are backing those individuals, so those individuals actually going out into our communities trying to organize around those different issues, other than Michelle Ree. And she said she was in the classroom for three years. That aren't classroom educators. So how are we gonna let someone come from the outside and tell us, this is what you have to do as a bus driver, this is what you have to do as a registrar, and if you don't meet this criteria, then you should be let go. Who are they to tell us? So we have to lead our own profession and we have to fight discriminatory societal systematic barriers to opportunity. That is what this department is about, and that's what we should do. So, we're gonna take a little, I'm gonna take a little break now. And what we're gonna do is, since we have a really good interactive team of seven people, I want you to assign one person that's gonna report out. Uh, we'll have about 30 minutes, maybe 20, 20 to 30 minutes, I'll give you an opportunity to, um, we're gonna give you a scenario. I'm gonna give you a scenario. You come up with a plan. Who do you already work with? And you can you speak about in your own communities who you have relationships with and who we spoke about, how we're gonna engage the community. Who do you already work with? How will you go about re leveraging those relationships to help us with this particular scenario? Who should you work with? Who, aren't you, who are you not reaching out to? Who do you need to reach out to to establish those relationships? Um, and then we'll share with the various different groups. We'll report out. I'll give you 20 to 30 minutes to work on it. But this is a scenario. Let's see, between Florida, Arkansas, and North Carolina. Let's say, let's give you the scenario of in Georgia. Bedrock of the Civil Rights Movement. Home of Martin Luther King III. Ebenezer Baptist Church. I mean, um, uh, Auburn Street. So anyway, let's look at... Um, in Georgia, charter school provision just passed, right? Um, they also want to expand that charter school provision to encompass private schools as well. And they're going to take um, 550, $50 million from the state budget to provide charter schools, private schools, private school vouchers for any family who wants to leave the public school and, and have your child attend um, private school. $50 million out of state budget. We're gonna start in Atlanta, we're gonna expand out to Georgia. We're gonna look at, from, G, from a GAE standpoint, all the various different organizations that we spoke about have reached out, we'll call it um, uh, Empowering Parents, that's the group that is coming to Georgia to push this. Empowering Parents is their name. They've reached out to the NAACP. They've reached out to Naleo. They've reached out to National Council of La Raza. They reached out to the Urban League. They have, um, they're sponsoring dinner at the, um, uh, the Democratic, um, they're sponsoring the NAACP dinner. They're sponsoring uh, a dinner at the MLK Center for the National Urban League. Um, they are, they've created the uh, Chavez Dinner for Latino Leaders, and they're sponsoring that dinner as well. They're reaching out to all the various different communities. They're, they're putting money out there. And this legislation has to pass. So who are we gonna build relationships with within our community? Who do we have relationships with? Who do we need to build relationships with, knowing they're throwing money out? 
someone says, and those dinners, how, do y'all know how much money those dinners cost? Hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, but that's just the plate. But the sponsorship to have your name up on the billboard and have your person come up and speak anywhere from fifty to seventy-five hundred thousand dollars that they're going to just drop in for these particular dinners. I know because that's the work that I do. Okay. So anyway, with that being said, knowing that they're putting money out there, they've reached out to the Latino community, the African American community, the API community. They've reached out to leaders but they want to push this in Georgia because they say, in their opinion, public education is failing our children in Georgia. And we want those children to be able to go to private school and get a better education. What will we do to prevent this legislation from moving forward? Who do we need to network in the community? Who do we need to reach out to in the community? Do we have union roles already established within Georgia Association of Educators? Do we have someone who's gonna to outreach to the various different communities and bring reports back? All right, so what's the first, what we got to start doing? Talking to our churches, well, having our churches. pastors, you know, talking with the pastor, letting them know and they can elaborate on what's, you know, what we've told them on what's going on. And then, you need to talk to your parent organization, PTA, parent organization, legislation, congressmen. Yep, yeah. Yeah, you may have some, some of those in your churches. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I found out if you talk to students, if you talk to children, yeah, right. they'll relate uh, the information parents. back to their parents, mm -hmm. which you can get more information. More, more um, reaction. Rea yeah. The more reaction. I would also mm -hmm. say that um, we need to know exactly who these people are that are coming to our school or our community. We need to find out what they stand for. Um, so therefore, we need to know who these sponsors are. Educate the public. Mm -hmm. Right. With, educate with, the public. with information on hand. And if we can get some of, uh, if they're proposing bills, we need to. Uh, see what those bills are so that we can be better informed because when we go to the churches and all these various places, what's the message are we sending? Yeah, we need to know what we're talking about mm -hmm. to even be able to tell them. So therefore, we need to uh, find out who these people are, what they stand for. Uh, uh, in Arkansas, they had this, the opportunity to learn, had uh, Jeb Bush them to come in. Actually, some of them attend the meeting so they would know what these people are talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we, after we did that, we had um, our own rally to counteract what they were saying, to express our feelings, our views, because no need to let them have the flow show and then we don't have anything to say. Exactly. So once we knew what their plan was, then we came up with our own rally. I think another good ammunition would be uh, a good relationship with your school board, okay, mm -hmm. and have them help you uh, make a community uh, meetings so that we can provide this information to the public, okay? And then again, um, as, as Latina and from my community, uh, we have to have it in uh, bilingual, okay? Because mm -hmm. not everybody's yeah. uh, uh, English speaking yeah. uh, uh, community, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we, I emphasize that we should have the information on hand so that we can push for this and, and, and educate the community what these people are all about and what they're trying to do to our schools. And also, attend school board meetings regularly. Don't just show up on, on the spur. Be, let them know that you're always involved and you are monitoring what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, make sure in my school, I made it a point to be on the agenda whether I speak or not. I have an open standing uh, position to be on the school board, so I try to always attend and be able to speak. Also, make sure that your school board is in agreement with what you're trying to support because sometimes they don't always support us the way we think we are. So if we can get some friends of the school board, always, you know, let them be your friend and try to express that during your school board presentation if you're on the agenda. 
Who are you looking at to bring in partnership? Any any organization you want to partner with? City Council. 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 We talk about the city council need to get involved. The police department sure. We need to draw all these people into what's going on in your community. And we also any traditional civil rights organizations. NAACP, Black Caucus. Who do you who think about who would you want to build partnerships with? Organizations that you already have partnerships with. Yes, organizations you need to reach out to. Mm -hmm. How do you meet with them? Who do you send to those various different meetings? Someone like we spoke earlier. Who said somebody said they are on the board of the NAACP, right? Or you know, so you may want if you have a member a member who is engaged yeah. who you would want to send who's already on the board to be the mouthpiece. I'm sorry. Okay. And also, you know, sometimes we, as a, a, a beginning party that I realized, we might need some uh, supporters. And since we are all a member of uh, NEA, AEA, and whatever your various states are, we reached out to them. And we, that's when we got our first grant. And that's when we started going door to door knocking, letting people know, come on out to this rally that we have, and we wanted to kind of get you informed. And I know they had grants for us. That's how we got started. And so different people, different organizations have. Come on now. Okay, your your parents, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, those type of uh, uh, um, groups. Oh. We have all the, 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 the we have the Hispanic Latino organizations, the traditional civil rights groups, any API community, mm. progressive organization. Valley Interfaith has been one that's worked with us in the past. And once we get some data to show the that. Uh, if uh, charter schools are successful or not successful mm -hmm. versus public schools and what we have to offer, these are some things that we need to get to get a commit committee together and uh, organize so when we get ready to present this. And we also need to have informed people that know about these. So in case we want to have questions and answer mm -hmm. sessions, yeah. these people can come in and answer any questions mm -hmm. that we cannot answer. Mm -hmm. Since neighborhood associations? Yeah. Are we going to look at neighborhood associations yeah. to go into? Neighborhood meetings? And we can explain like charter schools versus public schools, what charter schools do, how long they usually last, like maybe three years to five years, no more, and sometimes they don't always uh, prepare our students, and this is information that uh, informed parents need to make so that when they get ready to choose, hopefully, to stay in public school, they'll see, well, charter schools only last about three to five years, and then my child's not even uh, able to graduate because they didn't get what they need, you know. But we just need information and data, which shows the pros for public education. How about, let me throw something else in to get us sort of thinking. How about if they go up on the air with a young, what they did in Georgia, so I don't know if you remember the commercial yeah, they had, commercial young girl. little girl, yeah. African-American, yeah. black, African-American young girl, right. um, pretty much saying um, public schools have abandoned me and I need an alternative. Don't don't cut my future short. Very powerful. And I actually think that's what put them over the hump. How do we combat that? How do we know something like that is coming? Those types of commercials, or they may bring in a personality, someone from the Hispanic community, somebody from the African, African American community, who people sort of, a, a name brand person. How do we combat that? How do, you know? So let's think about that as well, because I think that with this last bill that just sort of went through Georgia, we could have actually thought about and prepared yeah. for those types. Because they're going to come. When they come, they're coming. Mm -hmm. they coming hard. They're coming hard. They ain't playing. This is money. That's money. You got to have money to go back. Go back out. I, um, I started as a bus driver for, for my um, district. And I know that the bus drivers have a, a large communication with parents. And uh, they are always the last ones they, they, they are thought of. Because I worked for the transportation department in my district for 19 years before I moved on to a school. Okay? So when you, when, and I still reach out to them, 
even though I'm not with the transportation department anymore. But when I talk to them and I let them know, you know, this is going to affect you in this way and that, they come in and they help out. My connection there is good. And, and I know that they will help me if I was to come to them with something like this to get out the message of what these people are coming to do to our education. How about an open forum if we plan one where we can get uh, parents coming in to express mm -hmm. their concerns, ask questions, mm -hmm. see what they're interested in, and then plan a meeting that we can have various speakers to come in and address those issues. Mm -hmm. Mervyn would be the person that should be there. <laughs> would, you, would you bring in someone from Arkansas, North Carolina, Texas, where they've implemented charter school policies yeah. or private school yeah. policies in the past and have failed, mm -hmm. and having some of those folks been able to come and address the, cr the, 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 the crowd or yeah. the audience to say, you know what, we tried this, yeah. and they pushed this through, and it didn't work. And I kind of did, they did that in Arkansas in January where they had uh, uh, Mr. Jed Bush and Mr. Jingle come in, but then they had people from Mississippi and uh, Louisiana come in and say, this is hurting us when we had our rally. Absolutely. And you have, excellent, excellent. And you also really have to make it a point to educate your elderly, mm -hmm. the ones that don't, don't have mm -hmm. children in school and the, your typical Democrat voter mm -hmm. is the, mm -hmm. that vote just mm -hmm. yes for one thing. Mm -hmm. See, that's and, and, just and, you know, they are Those elderly put out a lot of votes because people go pick them up and take them to vote. Sometimes they don't understand those type of issues. Right. And you know, that's why Texas came out very strong this, this time around uh, to vote. Because uh, literally, we went out there. I, I, in my community, we literally went out there and educated the, the, the community of how important their vote was. It's not just because you are now in this country or um, you're happy that your kids are just going to school because that was not available where, where you grew up your vote counts. If you do not vote, if you don't speak up, this is what's going to happen. And that's why Absolutely. we had a, a, you know, a large Absolutely. amount of people coming out and vote. Absolutely. And we can do the same thing with this action, because this is an action. If we don't act on it, we lose it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We had a forum with our school board. We had all our school board members and then we had the audience, uh, the public to come in and then they ask them questions on what about charter school, what you're going to do, uh, mm -hmm. how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. And then we had another forum where we had uh, Congress people come in mm -hmm. and we had the community come and they had to ask them different questions and where did you stand on it, you know, because these are the people that we elect. Exactly, exactly. And we have to make them accountable. And uh, we are very fortunate that we have a new uh, Democratic Party chair, which um, every month she throws a meeting, um, and uh, she invites congressmen to come and speak for us, uh, you know, and, and fill, fill us in on what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, our representatives also come and speak. So that helps, and I know I have that connection, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so. Okay. As we wrap up, um, how can we, and this is, this is just, how can we go on the offensive? Many times we play defense, right? They come into town, oh, we have, and we put together a plan. Mm -hmm. But what are the five things that we can just number right here, one, two, three, four, five, that will not make it as difficult for us to organize a community if we've already established relationships with organizations, a communications plan, what are the three to five things that you think that we could have already in place on a local level, on a state level, that we won't play def defense all the time, that we will have a playbook and we'll be on the offense and we've already established these various different partnerships and relationships? This is an excellent plan. We're, we're going to go through it. We'll have our registrar report out. Uh, however, what are the, um, what is, what's, what's a, the three to five point plan that what we need to do, you can think of it from your local associations, mm -hmm. from your state association, what we can do to be on the offensive rather than the defensive. Well, if you are well informed, 
you're going to have a good offense because if they, if they ask you, well, why are you against this? And you show them. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is why. Mm -hmm. And it's all about information and the right information. And the more we have, the, the less uh, insecure we'll be to do the, a presentation, I, I would think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So more information, being informed. Being informed and have the right speakers okay. to back us up. Okay. Okay. What else? Communication. Communication. Yeah. Communication yeah. is going to be very vital. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Constant communication with our partners and yes. with the community. Communication mm -hmm. with the community on a constant basis. Right. So how does that look? Do we want to have someone within the local, like somebody, my brother from North Carolina, he had a lot of uh, titles. Very important, right? I mean, it was you, yes, people, people know that you people know that you are a leader, and so what we want to have established community com, uh, the community engagement liaison, a community engagement chair, with at, at a local level, at a state level, that someone can regularly go to the school board meeting, someone can regularly go to the PTA meeting, somebody can go to the community meeting, or deputize someone to go and report back or give a report on what we're doing. Because what I noticed. People don't know the, the the sacrifice that educators give on a day to day basis. We're not getting that message out because it's in our normal routine. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. How many kids have been on your bus? I was one of those kids that would come late and then you have to <laughs> gotta take him home because he missed his bus. Let me go on and jump on. I, I'm not supposed to do it, but let me go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. Or the kid that we bring lunch to, or the kid that we help, you know, help their parents. We don't get that message out. And people look at public educators as, oh, you know, they work from 8, they get yeah. off at 2.30, and that's it. And that is not mm -hmm. our, we're 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And we don't get that message out. And so I think constant yeah, communication with the community. So when someone comes from the outside who they don't know, because I know in my town, someone comes from the outside, people kind of look at them like this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so we already have that constant communication. Say, you know what? We know Cherie. We know her. She's been involved with us before, so I'm sorry, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to take up all I mean, the time. I want to say communication that yes. leads with all our different service organizations, our newspapers, uh, we can put it on our community calendar, our radio, uh, send those home with kids, and a lot of times don't, don't, they don't always make it mm -hmm. there, but mm -hmm. this is communication, and whenever we do this, you know, make it a big fanfare. Yes. And we serve refreshments at Howard's, even if there's nothing gonna be but chips and cookies and punch. But like yes. I said the other day, we had sandwiches and punch and yes. cookies and chips. And after the meeting was, we say, come back and fellowship with us, ask us some questions. Yes. And people mingle and eat, and you know, yes. they start to get a little bit more involved. Yes. And if you do this constantly, they kind of come out again to uh, see what you're talking about. Absolutely. And always make your door open and welcome. Communications, information, anything else before we wrap up? Uh, well, if we get an action plan and, and uh, set out something, when I say action plan or agenda, and we kind of prepare this along the way, then we know we're going to kind of stair step this to the next event. Mm -hmm. This, we get plan. this one, mm -hmm. and then this leads to this, and this leads to that, and this Absolutely. leads to that. Very well delegated. Okay. You can't expect for uh, one person to do everything. Okay. You know, you that's have right. to make sure that the person that's in charge of the media takes care of that. Mm -hmm. The person that's in charge of the food to take care of that. Involved. Involved. Get, involved. You know, all of these people. Involved. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, the okay. person that's going to be in charge of getting uh, the legislative and the congressman and all of that there, you know. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. That's my job when, when it comes to that in, okay. in my association okay. Okay. as a legislative chair. Um, as a member of, of the church, I communicate to them, mm -hmm. let them know what's going to happen mm -hmm. so that they can be there also. So that, a well-delegated forum is the thing. Great. How about so engagement? Mm -hmm. You have to, not only in your action plan, which set up steps for you to take when certain things happen, but you also have to engage your community. You have to engage other members of your locals. Mm -hmm. You have to engage all these people, mm -hmm. and it has to be a part of your plan. You have to have engagement. So. so how are we going to combat the Empowering Parents movement? We're going to combat the Empowering Parents movement first by 
communicating with our churches, PTO, congressmen, federal, state, and local level, our local leaders for different organizations, our students, the ones who which are dependent on us to keep public ed education alive. We're going to go to our local school boards and we're going to show, tell them and provide them with points. We're going to see if they're going to support us. What is their position on this um, organization coming in? Um, and did they have any plans to rebut what this organization was going to do? And we're going to partner with various community groups. All the groups we have listed, the Black Caucus, NAACP, um, the social um, organizations, the frats, the sororities, Boys and Girls Club, because a lot of our students are participating in those groups after school. We're going to do the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts. We're going to ask that we compile, we're going to compile the data of the charter school. And within this data, we're going to talk about the uh, operations of the charter school. We're going to talk about the charter school's success rate. And we're going to talk about if they're hiring certified teachers and staff to help educate our children. Um, we're going to communicate by meter. We're going to do it airtime, radio time. We're going to um, contact our parents within the communities. You have some parents that are not in PTOs or PTAs, so we got to get the message out to those parents. We're going to have town hall meetings with our local officials, different um, school board leaders. We're um, going to solicit teachers, parents, students to come. We're going to have open forum for dialogue on what the concerns and the issues are within the community. We're going to bring persons from other states with knowledge of how charter schools and private schools run, how it's hurt their communities, how it's hurt their state, um, and how it's hurt public education. The next we're going to get with our elderly groups, we're going to educate them on the issues at hand. We're going to encourage them to get out and vote and we're going to engage them in the process. A lot of elderly people do want to become involved if they know what they're getting involved with. In our plan, we're going to communicate in all forms, media, email, sending letters home to parents, um, any way we can within the churches, within the social groups. Then we're going to, our information, we're going to get all the information we can on the empowerment movement and we're going to let people see versus what's really going on with public education, how it will hurt. Then we're going to combine an action plan with the do's of what we're going to do at each step and each level of a process. Then we're going to engage all everybody. We're going to engage our parents. We're going to engage our community leaders. We're going to engage our partners. We're going to engage our students. We're going to engage most of all our teachers and staff in the education so we can shed light on the parents and parent movement. Right. That, that, that. Very thorough plan. Very I'm thorough plan. <laughs> I'm taking you all with me. All, all, all of y'all. I'm going to have you all on my email list. That was an excellent plan. And those are some of the things uh, with regard to the students. I think also with the college students and our student membership as well who are very, very active. But that was a very concise plan. Thank you very much. Um, on what we do when and they come up with a real fancy name empowering parents and how do we combat that when we're on the defense but then also let's think about when we go back home to our locals and to our state affiliates we need to have a proactive plan to make sure that we are um, in engaging the community and so when we just we'll, let me finish up our PowerPoint when we speak about what we're doing and how we can help you with regard to MCOP the minority community organizing and partnerships department how we look at partnerships. We're looking at, and I tell you, we took our partnership, external partnerships and, and advocacy and minority community um, outreach and combined those two departments into one department. And we're looking at partnerships. And I'll be honest, historically, historically, and it's, I'm not saying this is good or bad, but NEA was a donor. We donated to various different um, um, uh, organizations, civil rights organizations, traditional organizations, progressive organizations, we donate it. We want, you to, we want NEA to sponsor our breakfast. We want NEA to help us put together uh, or, 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 or fund a, um, a, um, voter, a, a, a voter registration project. And so we would cut a check and give that organization the ability to go do it. This past year, we did something a little bit differently. NAACP came to us and said, you know, we're gonna partner with you all and we want you all to, you know, fund our operation to go and do voter registration. Great, wonderful. However, what we want to do this year, a little bit differently, we wrote a plan where the NAACP brought their trainers, their best trainers. We didn't want somebody who just signed up yesterday to become a trainer. That Marvin Randolph, who's been training for years and brought their best trainers on, on, on voter registration, we did a two-day training 
at the, NW, at, at the NEA building, we brought in their trainers from all across the country. We brought in individuals from our locals from North Carolina, Florida, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Virginia into Washington, D.C., who was involved and who wanted to be trained to go out and do this particular work. And um, so rather than cutting them a check and saying, go do it, we will bring your people in to teach our people a true partnership. That's a true partnership. And many of our traditional partners now are agreeing that, wow, that is a real true partnership and how we can actually share data, share information, and share power. Because I truly believe our power is in our members more so than, a than in a check. And so we're looking at how we reimagine those partnerships. We want to change the emphasis from DC to, local, to our locals. My team, my staff that I have to do uh, our um, Delia Garcia, who does Latino outreach. She's the first elected Latino in the state of Kansas. She's on my team in Washington, D.C. right now. She knows everyone in the Latino space in the states. She knows everyone in Washington, D.C. I can't go anywhere. Every day, she said, Merwin, I need you to go to the Leo. I need you to go to the La Raza luncheon. I need you to go to the Latino leaders luncheon. I'm going to all these various. She knows everybody in that space. Tiffany Cross from the African American space who does the African-American outreach, she used to work at BET, communications guru, knows everyone in the White House. She knows everyone in Washington, D.C. Uh, Monica Tamarith, who is the API outreach, she knows everyone in Washington, D.C. with regard to her community. What we want to do is take those relationships and delve those, broker those relationships with individuals on the ground, be it in Florida, be it in Texas, be it in Georgia, be it in Arkansas, be it in North Carolina. We want to broker those relationships. It doesn't help us at all if we're doing, have all these relationships in Washington, D.C. And empowering parents and all these other various different types of groups are on the ground. We need to figure out how we broker those relationships and have that partnership broker down so we can help our members and affiliate at the local level. And that's what we'll be doing. Um, we want to provide tools and assist local community organizing. We, we're looking at right now providing a scan of all of our various different states. Who are the players in the communities within the communities of color? If we have a legislative crisis that's going on in a particular state, who are the people who look to us for assistance? Who do we look to for assistance? Who is that one individual? Because in some communities, I'm from Augusta, Georgia, fair, relatively small. There's a few pastors who you know you can go to you when you get something done. There's a few people in the PTA or a few people in the community um, um, organizing space that you know you go to when you want to get. Who are those people and how do we build those networks? and those um, partnerships with, and how can we turn over those partnerships and those organizing tools to those um, where they're needed. How, and, what we, and more importantly, we want to help recruit, engage, train, and support our diverse ethnic minority leaders. People in this room, other trainings that we've been in, how do we just, how do we take this training and say, you know what, there's somebody in Arkansas, and she's just the new about the Opportunity to Learn campaign, John Jackson's program, and she understood, and we had the sisters from Georgia come in. How do we make sure that we're bringing, you don't, that you just don't only come to this one first training conference and you don't do anything with that? How do we continue to engage you? And I'm asking, I'll be honest with you, I need your help in continuing to engage. Like Merwin, these are the things that we're interested in. This is what's going on in Arkansas. This is what's going on in North Carolina. We were just in North Carolina at CIAA. And we have a relationship, a partnership with the CIAA, and we wanted to do it a little bit differently this year. Rather than go down, and CIAA is a big basketball um, tournament, and rather we sponsor it, and rather than just sort of go down and have a reunion atmosphere, when you come to our exhibit booth and get the NEA bag with all of the nice stuff in it, we want you as a member, potential member, or a public, a, a member of a citizen of the public, to go to the website or sign a pledge card on issues around social justice that you involved, that you want to be involved in. Or where you think um, public education, what issues of public education rank um, um, with regard to your priority and how you feel. And so that was something that the local asked us to put together. Rather than we just sort of going down having a good time, we actually are providing the local something and we can bring that information back to Washington, D.C. Because we're under attack and the times, the days of having a good time and Fellowshipping, that's all well and good, but we have work to do. And so, more importantly also, we want to reignite our claim and legacy around social justice issues. 
we want to ensure. Any has always done this work, but we want to we want to ignite it. We want it to be a part of everything that we say. If you remember the, if you were at the RA last year when you heard our Executive Director John Stocks give his passionate plea around social justice educators that we want people to rise up and stand up and take hold and be active around voting rights issues, around racial profiling issues, around issues around immigration, supporting that and be an active supporter. Those are things that he spoke about. Um, and so we want to look at our partnerships, reimagine partnerships. We want to, I spoke about this, we want to be institutional. We want to be innovative. We want to be programmatic. But more importantly, we want these relationships to connect to our members. And we have a new uh, return on investment. We see ROI. Every time we give a check out to various different organizations, and I want to fund them. I'm a baby of the civil rights movement. If, I was, if the civil rights movement hadn't taken place, I wouldn't be where I am right now. However, with regard to return on investment, what, what are our members? These are our members' dues dollars. What are we getting back? How can I say, okay, Merwin, you spoke about all this stuff last year. Well, next year I got a report on what we've been doing. How did those various different partnerships connect with our members? How did it, how did it help advance student achievement? How did it close the achievement gap? How did this partnership help more children of color graduate from high school? And so that's what we'll be speaking about as well. We spoke about brokering national relationships down to the states, how our partnerships should be methodical and purposeful. And at the same time, more, more importantly, making sure we're advancing our goals for strong affiliates and how we are going to lead the profession and also support priority schools as well. And so when we speak about outcomes, you can see that as well. I'm running out of, town, out of time. But more importantly, the most important thing we want to speak about, how do we ensure that we're able to help locals build union roles? We have a very, I'm the steward, I'm the vice chair, but how do we make sure we have a chair of community engagement at our various different locals and how can we help you, um, help your locals set those up? Identify social justice activists. We want to ensure that we are able to tag in the van, the voter access, ne voter ac access network, that we have identified our members who want to be part of this network of social justice um, activists. We spoke about recruiting, engaging, and training the next leaders within, um, with, from our ranks as well. But at the same time, I'm very serious about how do we test this? How do we test this? Are we really true about what we say we are? How do we test this? How do we move forward with regard to an army of, 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 of union members who actually believe not only we need to protect the union role with regard to collective bargaining and you know, retirement and pensions, but at the same time, how do we also protect? Right now, the Supreme Court is looking at Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. So it's very important that we weigh in and have a voice around that um, as well. And so our Center for Advocacy, I mentioned earlier, MCOP is one of four. Within the entire Center for Advocacy, we have government relations, we have uh, collective bargaining, we have human and civil rights, and we have minority community outreach and partnerships. Kim Anderson is the director for the entire center. Uh, and with those, these are the various different tools that are available. Um, professional development training through human and civil rights, all the various different trainings with regard to diversity and cultural competency, sexual harassment, bullying, social justice, LBGTQ, um, and ELL. Bullying is up twice and it shouldn't be. Outreach assistant planning and training with regard to MCOP. We're right now, we're looking at mapping out various different communities. Who are those people in the community who we need to build relationships with? Who do we already have relationships with as well? Uh, help identify and connect them with partners, training and holding community conversations, um, guiding minority community development, and um, a guide to establish faith-based faith outreach as well. And so these are some of the tools with regard to um, Center for Advocacy and Outreach. Um, and all of these are important, but if you have an opportunity to have Catalyst of Van training, very, very important, being tagged in the van. Uh, it's a huge network. If you want, I can share with you what it's about after this, take a few moments, didn't want to take up a lot of various different time. But uh, at the time, same time, very important. You can go into Catalyst and look, or, or the van we can look and see who has been active around various different education issues in our van. People are tagged. So you can actually go in and see who hasn't voted yet, who has a history of voting. You can also see those who've become 18 who hasn't registered to vote yet, those who've been active around various different issues and everything. It's really, really, 
I think it's good stuff. Some people have a problem. These are some of our, just a few of the organizations who we partner with to do various different um, things as well. Uh, and we really do a great job of diversifying our partnerships as well. Uh, we just ended conversations around our first series of grants that we're going to give out. Um, some of the states that are around, I know they applied um, for various different grants. And what we're looking at is how we improve student achievement. That's one of the first areas that we want to do. How do we engage members who've been to trainings as well? And lastly, how do we establish union roles with regard to outreach into the community? And so we have an online survey. You have it. I would love for everyone to go on the survey when you have an opportunity. Um, these are some of the abbreviations. You have it in your PowerPoint as well. I can email you this PowerPoint. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. We have about 10 more minutes. And um, yes, I'll email it out to everyone. I'll send around a um, sign-up sheet as well. And that's my information to contact me.